COVID lockdowns are underway once again here in Washington State where I live. There are some of the more severe restrictions like grandma is not allowed to come over for Thanksgiving and you're not allowed to go over to grandma's unless you guys quarantine in preparation for a certain period of time. Businesses are restricting activity, if not closing down altogether. Of course, we have seen millions of Americans lose their job since the beginning of this. And so I think it's a fair time to reevaluate Is the lockdown protocol getting us what it's often sold to us as, as if there is this very simple choice between either the economy or people's lives? So in other words, if you were to look at states with the result of high unemployment, would you at least see that they had lower COVID cases? This was the question that I wanted to try to find an answer to. I'm going to preface this by saying I'm not a data expert. I'm not a map expert, but I did find two maps one of unemployment in June, one of COVID cases around the same time to just look at state by state results. And I'm curious what you will see in these maps that maybe I'm missing. Maybe you'll think I'm totally wrong. But what I found was that it's not as simple a duality or a trade-off as it's often discussed. And these are important questions to ask because this is the unemployment statistics list from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And If you look at the historical highs here, this is dating back to 1976, January, when the series began. Almost every single state's historical high is from 2020, except for Alabama, which is 1982. Uh, Let's see, 1983, Missouri, and 1983, I believe that's West Virginia, But if I'm looking at all this here without missing any other state, yeah, it's April, May, July, June, 2020 historical highs. That's bad. This is going to have long lasting repercussions that I'm not sure anybody really can foresee at this point. So asking questions about unemployment as a trade off for saving lives to me is a fair question to be asking. So I'm curious to hear from you in the comment section what you think about all this. But before we get started, I want to say thank you for the previous comments about the audio, because if you have noticed so far, I have a brand new microphone and I'm hoping that all of you who have made somewhat kind and somewhat Uh, We'll just call it constructive feedback about the audio in the past. I hope you are now able to release your fingers from your ears and listen more freely because the audio has been fixed with this wonderful new mic that was given to me by video influencers. Actually, I appeared on one of their live shows and they were kind enough to gift this mic to me. If you are growing a YouTube channel or interested in starting your own YouTube channel, you should definitely check them out because they give lots of great advice. They've got hundreds of thousands of more subscribers than I do and know way more about this, but they're really good with helping grow channels. And so I'm really grateful for the advice I've gotten from them, but also that they were willing to give me this microphone. And now we're all benefiting from that. So Check them out. Also, leave me a comment in the comment section about what's going on in your state. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in the latter part of the video, but just curious how everybody is doing with these lockdowns and what they look like where you live. Also, there are links in the description for how you can support my work, and we are now going to get to these maps. The map on the left comes from data compiled by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics and put together by Fortune. It is June 2020 unemployment. The map on the right comes from the Centers for Disease Control, June 30th to July 6th COVID cases. I had a little bit of a tough time finding anything that was comparable in the more recent past, but I think this still works because it's kind of halfway through all this insanity we've been dealing with and they are occurring at about the same time, June unemployment. And then this one week, June 30th to July 6th COVID cases. What do these two maps show us? And I'm curious, what do you see? Because maybe you see something different than I do. I'm certainly not a data expert, but I do think there are some questions that come up when looking at this again about sort of that, what I believe may be an oversimplified choice, this duality of like unemployment versus COVID cases and whether lockdowns necessarily or even the changes of behavior that people have based on COVID that these necessarily bring a lower rate of COVID cases. So in both of the maps, if you have a brighter red color, it means a higher rate of something. So higher rate of unemployment in California, which is bright red. And then you see also it has a higher rate of COVID cases in that burnt red, orangish color. So that shows sort of I don't know that if you have these severe lockdowns in California and you have high unemployment, you didn't necessarily get 
low COVID cases. Now, if you look at Hawaii, it's different. Hawaii appears to have high unemployment in this particular map on the left. But if you look at the map on the right, it has low COVID cases. If you look at Illinois, Illinois has very high unemployment. If you look on the right map, it also has, you know, medium to high levels of COVID. On the map on the left for unemployment, they show the highest rates are Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey. The lowest rate is Kentucky. If you look at the highest rate states over on the right, they're variable. Looks like New York doesn't have the highest rate there of COVID cases, though, of course, New York City is a little bit of a different story. Uh, New Jersey is a lighter color, too, when it comes to COVID cases, but also high unemployment. So that's a little bit different. And then Massachusetts, it it also kind of has that some high unemployment, but lower caseloads. Washington State, where I live, has kind of medium unemployment, if you look at that, but it has higher levels of COVID cases, Oregon, higher unemployment, lower COVID cases. So kind of the exact opposite there. If you look consistently with like Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, that area, you see that they're pretty consistent with lower unemployment and lower COVID cases. Now, this isn't all just related to lockdowns, obviously, people change their behaviors, lockdown or not. We've seen that people are not going out as much. And maybe it's not because there's nowhere to go. It's because they don't want to be exposed and they're socially isolating because they're scared of COVID, which means that even if you had a release of these lockdown protocols and we didn't have them, you would probably still see a lot of people changing their behavior. And so states like Hawaii, for instance, which are reliant on tourism, for instance, those are going to be affected lockdown or not because, you know, maybe people just don't want to travel as much. And we do see that that has been part of the unemployment problem is that when you're closing down businesses that are retail or dining, for instance, and you have an economy that relies heavily on that kind of industry, you're going to see much harder hit economic consequences than in a state that maybe has some other kind of foundation for its economy. So All I'm trying to say here is that it doesn't seem to be like an apples to apples, A plus B equals C equation when it comes to your just dealing with unemployment in order to save lives. Because as you've seen, in some cases, you might be able to make that argument, but in other states, it doesn't really seem to be like you got high unemployment, but at least you save people's lives. It seems like, for instance, in California, you had high unemployment, but you also had really high levels of COVID. So I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I think that what's unfortunate is that when you have data like this, which just reveals that dealing with COVID is a complicated problem to solve, and it requires asking good questions and leaders who are willing to answer them. And unfortunately, in some cases, we've seen leaders just disregard the questions of reporters. You know, that goes for President Trump as much as it goes for what you're going to see in the upcoming clips. This is from Austin Jenkins, who is a reporter for Northwest News Network. He says, I have been asking Governor Inslee and the Washington Department of Health why Washington has a 25 percent cap on grocery stores whereas Oregon has 75% and what the science is to justify. I think they're done with me. Quote, we've done our best to address your question with the information we have. We have nothing further to add. We're looking at Governor Cuomo, who's asked about New York City and reopening schools. And this is what he had to say with a reporter who asked him about that. And for the millions of parents who want to know, are the schools going to open tomorrow in New York City? All right. First of all, let's try not to be obnoxious and offensive in your tone. If that reporter's tone was obnoxious, I think it's got to be because Governor Cuomo has been asked one too many questions by his brother on CNN. How, what are you talking about? You're now going to override. We did it already. That's the law. An orange zone and a red zone. Follow the facts. I'm still confused. Well, then you're confused. I'm confused. And I then I'll tell you what, Jimmy. Still, parents are still confused as well. The schools oh, they're not confused. Tomorrow. You're confused. No, I think read the law. Confused as well. Read the law, and you won't be confused. Listen to his response when another reporter follows up and says, "Hey, that was a valid question, and I don't think that my peer was obnoxious to ask it." I think Jimmy's correct in, in asking that question. I don't think it's obnoxious at all. Well, I don't really care what you think. Uh, of course, 
you agree with him because you're in the same business with him. I think that if that had been a Trump press conference, we can all agree that the headline for NBC's YouTube clip of it would not have been Cuomo defends closing New York City schools as COVID cases rise. It would have been Trump fires back at reporter when asked legitimate question about COVID or something like that. And so it's just interesting how some of these leaders get total passes on not answering questions. Well, what is the answer to your question? What is the answer to your question? I don't know what the answer is. I'm yes, you do. You, you said when does the state close the schools? So I'd really love to hear from you and what the policy is like where you live and how that's affected life there and how it's affected your life. I'm thinking about doing a separate video, just compiling people's stories really about how COVID-19 policies have affected their lives. Are you facing job loss, homelessness? Are you not going to be able to give your kids presents for Christmas this year? I'm really interested in this kind of stuff and how, how lives have been altered, not just by the disease itself. Cause I know that there are people who have lost loved ones to COVID and obviously that's tragic as well, but there's also millions of people who have lost jobs have lost homes because of this and those stories are important as well and I feel like they made it into the news at the beginning of these lockdowns but I don't hear about them as often anymore and so I'm fascinated by how these policies are creating collateral damage that is not perhaps getting the voice that it deserves and allowing us to have fair, reasonable, logical conversations about what should or should not happen in one state or another in order to balance these really difficult times and just to have conversations that are really important to make sure that our leaders who are making these policies are doing them based in important data and not just for partisan political reasons. So again, tell me what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe as usual. There are links in the description for how you can support my work. There's Patreon, there's PayPal. But again, just engaging with the content is really helpful and I'll see you all next time.